Paul Goldsmith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My uh, pleasure to speak on this bill. It's interesting, Mr. Parker. Uh, Mr. Parker makes a claim of vote Labour and get your fair share. It'll be a fair share of not very much at all, but it'll still be a fair share. And that's the problem with Labour, is that uh, they're all about uh, spreading uh, the gains, but not about actually making the money in the first place. It's the same party, it's the same party that has this manifesto that we're all about uh, equality of outcomes. And uh, how are we going to achieve that in a, in a world without uh, a high degree of force? Uh, is beyond me, and that, I think, is the essence of the problem that we have with the Labour Party at the moment. They, 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 they are there. It's listed in their, do in their manifesto. Uh, well, uh, uh, my understanding is that from the, 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 the introduction... No, no, but the introduction uh, to the Labour Party's policy platform from David Parker himself is that this is going to guide the manifesto when they're all about equality of outcomes. And that means, you know, if everybody's got to have the same outcome, no matter whether they work hard or don't work hard, or whether they're lucky or they're not lucky, or whether they're good at rugby or not good at rugby, or whether they've got five kids to five different parents, they're, they're, they're all going to have the same outcome. And you can, I think if you don't have to look too far in history to see that you can only achieve that uh, through some uh, very serious force. But uh, getting back to this bill, Mr Speaker, uh, the New Zealand Superannuation and Retired Income Amendment Bill, uh, first reading, uh, uh, the point, the main purpose of this bill is to enable the New Zealand Superannuation Fund to invest more efficiently and ultimately to generate more return per unit of risk. And uh, this is important because the superannuation fund invests money on behalf of the, behalf of the government, uh, some $25 billion at the moment, and this will help pay for increased costs of superannuation in the years to come. And uh, the long-term growth-orientated investor of the fund has about $25 billion in assets, including about $3.7 billion in New Zealand, and most of it offshore. And it's managed by the Crown entity, the Guardians of New Zealand Superannuation. Now, the superannuation, as we, uh, the fund, as we've heard, started in 2003 with $2.5 in cash, and since then it's returned about 9% a year and is a world-class sovereign wealth fund, uh, now standing at $25 billion, and can, constitutes about 40% of the Crown's portfolio. So, now... Uh, <laughs> And we hear from the other side, from New Zealand first, oh, well, well, if it's such great returns, why don't we borrow lots of money and put it into the fund? They don't seem to realise that there is, a, there, is a, there is a connection. So the government suspended its contributions in 2009 because with fiscal deficits as they were, the government debt was already increasing rapidly and it was imprudent to borrow more to invest in global investment markets. And I think most people understand that in their own household budgets, that you don't go uh, and uh, get your mortgage extended in order to in, in, in order to invest on the stock exchange because you know that certainly uh, you have to pay your money back to the bank uh, regardless of what happens but there's no guarantee that what you invest in the stock exchange will necessarily be the same as it was uh, the money that you put in. You can lose money and that's how it works. So uh, there's no question that the superannuation fund has uh, done a very good job of its investment and they are to be uh, commended absolutely. Now this bill uh, relaxes the control, the control restrictions uh, in Section 59 to allow the Guardians to control passive holding subsidiaries described as fund investment vehicles in the bill. And these changes will enable the fund to structure investments more efficiently and give them some more flexibility. And I think that uh, makes sense after uh, what, what we've had just slightly more than a decade of the fund in existence. They will continue to be prevented from holding or taking substantial controlling interests in any underlying operating entity, such as through takeovers. We don't particularly want them running or controlling separate companies, uh, but we do uh, want them to have the ability to have uh, control passive holding subsidiaries. And the fund has been seeking these as a high priority uh, to enable them to do their best job for New Zealand and to give us the ability to offset some of the uh, money that we'll be spending on superannuation in years to come. Uh, the, the income arising from the fund is included in the New Zealand tax base, and that's important. We don't want uh, uh, any particular tax treatment of this to be unusual. The, the bill amends the Income Tax Act 2007 so that any fund investment vehicle or companies in which the interests are held by the guardians for the fund will not be subject to the exemption for public authorities uh, so, that, so that they can uh, make their decisions based in a tax neutral setting. Uh, the bill also seeks to amend the powers that can be delegated by the board to the guardians. 
Currently, the Act provides that the Board must not delegate any of the following powers, the power to grant a power of attorney, the power to appoint an investment manager, and the power to appoint a custodian. And so the Bill proposes to remove these restrictions. The, the effect will be that the Crown Entities Act 2004 will apply in full. I'm looking very much forward to uh, uh, the submissions and the select committee process in the FEC. I'm glad that the, National Party, uh, the Labor Party have indicated their support for this bill, and I hope that uh, together we'll be able to work uh, on this legislation and make sure that it's uh, absolutely fit for purpose, as I'm sure it is introduced, and I look forward to that discussion. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Honourable Trevor Mellor. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, uh, we, we saw that member...